Well, the TSX Venture Exchange is down 27% so far this year as the exchange hit its all-time low last week. Our next guest, however, likes these dog days of December and says now is the time to bottom fish for undervalued companies. For more, we're joined with Mickey Fulp. He's geologist and editor at mercenarygeologist.com. Mickey, it's great to have you here. Uh, what should investors Thank who, you, Paul. there's a lot of investors out there who uh, watch this show and who watch the TSX venture closely. Uh, how are they to interpret a, uh, a, the, uh, the index being at an all time low? Well, if you look at a series of charts, which I just posted uh, uh, for uh, 10 of the last 11 years, somewhere between two or three days, either side of December 15th, the venture exchange has hit, uh, if not uh, a yearly low, a seasonal low. And this happens because of tax loss selling and generally low volumes. And the general investor is focused on uh, the gifting and holiday season. If you're an American, you're, you're probably going to uh, uh, eat turkey, uh, uh, drink, and watch football. If you're Canadian, you're probably going to watch hockey during the season. Mm -hmm. So what this does, it enables uh, savvy investors to come in because in downtimes, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, so you can cherry pick some undervalued companies at this time of year. Is the effect of tax loss selling uh, more pronounced in the case of these small, small and micro cap stocks uh, versus the big board? Well, absolutely, and you can look at the drop in the venture exchange this year, 27%. And Canadians, as opposed to Americans, we can't carry back losses, but Canadians can. So if you remember back in 2011, was was uh, uh, 2010, 2011, banner years. So uh, Canadians can carry uh, tax losses back that far to burn up profits this year. So it's a seasonal thing, um, and uh, and. And it affords opportunities, like I said, to for investors to bottom fish. How should investors approach that task? If they want to bottom fish, what should, what should they be looking for? How should they be buying? Well, I can tell you the way I do it. Uh, I uh, put in stink bids. You know, you've got to do very strong due diligence. Uh, the venture exchange is beaten up, but good companies have been taken down too. So look at share structure, people, projects, cash in the bank, and uh, and put in stink bids and 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 assess the risk reward profile. If you get filled, you're happy to own it. Uh, if you do not get filled, well, it didn't re reach your uh, risk reward profile, but you can average. Down down in stocks you already hold. You can go into new ventures with with a, a, a short time frame because we always see this rise uh, at toward the end of December and especially in the new year for short-term profits, or you can pick up stocks that, uh, that perhaps you want to hold for a longer period of time. You've touched on this already, but for an ordinary retail investor, uh, the idea of doing due diligence on a company may seem fairly daunting. Where, where should they go? They, they would go to the company's annual report. They would go to other publicly available documents. What kind of things are they looking for when they want to do due diligence on a small cap stock? Well, you need to look again at share structure, people projects. You want a tight share structure. You want people with experience in the business who have had success before. And you want a good project in a ge geopolitical stable area. So the best place to start is with the corporate presentation. Uh, and you'll get a lot of your questions answered there. And it really becomes a process of elimination. You want to eliminate most of these stocks as quickly as you can. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to call up and uh, and have a chat, uh, uh, and if not with the investor relations person, try to get to the president. You know, these guys are, are geologists and engineers generally. They're technically trained, and most of them will be willing to talk to interested uh, shareholders or people who may become shareholders. Let's talk about a few names that are on your list. One of them is Brazil Resources. As the name implies, it's active in Brazil in the, in the gold sector, but you like it because of its uranium play in the Athabasca region. Well, I own this stock, and uh, and they're likely to be a sponsor of my website soon. But uh, besides the three point million, uh, three point nine million ounces of gold resources in Brazil, uh, they have a a very interesting uranium play in the Athabasca Basin, surrounded by uh, they surround Maybell River and Ariba deposit uh, on the Alberta side, and it's been largely ignored. I can speculate. 
uh, that that this uranium play will be spun out a, as a separate company at some point. Companies just announced an oversubscribed uh, private placement, 55 cents, and uh, I like this stock enough. I'm participating in that, and and at the time it was done, it was 10 percent over market. You also like Avrupa Minerals and Crescent Point Energy. We only have time for one. Pick one and tell us why you like it. Well, let's uh, let's take Crescent Point, and probably uh, uh, you've heard this story before, but this is a well-run uh, Canadian oil company concentrated in the Bakken in Saskatchewan. Uh, it has manageable debt. It has very high net backs, so, uh, and it's, it's uh, sold forward. It's hedged uh, significant production through 2016. Uh, it's got a nice dividend, and it's trading at fire sale prices at this time in my my opinion. Okay, I think we can squeeze in that other one. So tell us about Avrupa Minerals. It's uh, it's a play actually in Kosovo. Uh, interesting uh, there because you mentioned stable geopolitical situations a while ago. Does Kosovo fit that bill? Well, it does for me, and I've been to Kosovo uh, I've, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the thing about Alvrupa, they've had two discoveries. They're a prospect generator in Europe, uh, two discoveries this year, one in Portugal, the new one in Kosovo. Uh, it's gone up on this, uh, but if you look after uh, its February discovery uh, in Portugal, it settled back down into the, to the low to mid 20 cent range, so I probably wouldn't go chase it at the at the uh, current share price, but but we would probably look for it to back off here, uh, uh, say toward the end of January, perhaps. Mickey, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day and a great holiday season. Hey, same to you and yours. Happy holiday, Paul. That was Mickey Falp. He's geologist and editor at MercenaryGeologist.com. Just before we go, we want to remind, remind you that you can catch reruns of commodities throughout the day. We also love hearing from you, our viewers. If you've got a question or an idea for a show, email us at, BN, at commodities at bnn.ca. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.